and my dear students a very warm welcome to ganpat university foreign speaker lecture series on ai advancement evolution and innovations today we gather here to explore the fascinating world of artificial intelligence and its ground breaking advancements and exploring professor mansoor's research work before we proceed let us take a moment to express our gratitude to our esteemed guests who have graced this occasion with their presence we are privileged to have with us honorable pro chancellor and director general ganpat university dr mahendra sharma sir thank you sir for joining we are honored to have with us today a renowned expert in field of ai professor vatik manso dean of college of engineering and information technology at university of dubai mm -hmm. professor manso is a visionary leader and has made significant contributions in the field of artificial intelligence through research innovations and expertise thank you so much sir for accepting our cordial invitation and interacting with our young minds today We welcome Dr. Satyan Parekh, sir, Deputy Pro Vice Chancellor and Executive Dean. So we'll soon be joining online. We warmly welcome Dr. Rakesh Vanzara, Associate Executive Dean, UG Programs at Faculty of Engineering. Thank you so much, sir, for joining online. We warmly welcome Dr. Alavi Kanhu, sir, from University of Dubai. Thank you, sir, for joining. We warmly welcome Dr. Achyut Trivedi, sir, Chairperson and Center for Excellence in Additive Manufacturing. Your presence adds immense value to this event, and we are grateful for your support throughout. The Ganpat University Foreign Lecture Series aims to foster knowledge exchange and provide a platform for intellectual discussions on emerging topics. Today's lecture is on AI advancements, evolution, and innovation. Promises to be an enlightening experience for all of us. With this, I welcome Honorable Pro Chancellor, Director General, Ganpat University, Dr. Mahendra Sharma, sir, to please deliver. We'll start. We'll start. Okay. And yes. Without further ado, I would like to invite Professor Vatik Mansur, sir, for your expertise and insights in the field of AI, which is highly appreciated. We are eager to learn from your vast knowledge and experience. Please, sir. Thank you very much indeed. Um, can you display the presentation, Rima, please? Yes, sure. Okay. So Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Or do you want yes, me to yes. share mine? Do you want me to share mine? It's up to you. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So the slide is on the screen. Ah, yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So today I'm going to give you an overall about. Uh, first of all, thank you to the uh, to your university. Um, it's a great honor to uh, share my uh, research work. Uh, with you and uh, at the beginning i give you some uh, uh, background about uh, i mean the evolution of uh, uh, artificial intelligence okay so we'll uh, uh, go to next slide uh, uh, Rina, please 
Yes, sir. The next slide has come. Yeah. Yeah. So this is actually the outline of the my talk. Um, give you some uh, historical background about artificial intelligence, um, evolutions of artificial intelligence, a uh, little bit about machine learning, deep learning, ongoing research, and current challenges. And definitely, we concluded with the uh, future research directions. So at the beginning, we'll uh, talk about AI a little bit. Yeah. Okay, so if you could ad advance in the second slide, please. Yeah, so uh, let me first start with the, some history about AI. You know that uh, artificial intelligence is the, I mean, the main aim is to, uh, yeah, intelligence in general is to give uh, whatever entity, whether it is a human or subject or machine, uh, some kind of intelligence. And this intelligence could be any, could be very simple, one intelligence, for example, or could be more than one intelligence factor. So, for example, let's say um, at the beginning, uh, um, humans start to create and use uh, whatever available to uh, make the some. Uh, create some tools to help uh, them in doing their, uh, their work in a better way. So for example, I think the, the invention of the wheel was a, a very important invention in, the his, in our history of humanity. It helped us a lot. And you know, the wheel is mainly to convert the uh, circular uh, movement into straight movement. And this is actually some kind of intelligence. So this wheel is intelligent, but the intelli its intelligence is very simple. It has one intelligence factor, which converting the movement uh, from circular to straight movement. And, you, and, uh, and this is, uh, I remember, in all our life, like, you know, and everything we are using, cars, factories, we are, we are using a lot of uh, uh, the circular movement, like motors, machines, these kind of things. Okay. So the artificial intelligence is, is very old. And then in the last century, we started to uh, make the machine to be has multiple intelligence and not just multiple intelligence, programmable intelligence. It means that we could make the machine to function, to do several functions. And then we could reprogram it to do more functions. And uh, this is the coincided with the evolutions of computers. So the terminology of artificial intelligence now becomes like, you know, how to create or develop algorithms to make the machines to think and make decisions. So this is the main aim of the artificial intelligence, is to enable the machines to assess the situation and then um, make the right decision to address these situations. Uh, so that's why we have, for example, the robots. Robots are fed with the artificial models, artificial intelligence models. So they can, they could see, they can recognize objects, 
and then uh, they can walk, they can uh, see their way to their targets, they can mainly respond to the environment. So the, uh, the, if we can, can make the machine to uh, assess, uh, I mean, sense the environment, assess the environment, and then make decision, decisions according to the uh, situation or of the environments. So the artificial intelligence actually mainly is a general umbrella of many disciplines. For example, we have cognitive computing, computer vision, uh, machine learning, uh, neural networks, uh, deep learning, uh, natural language processing. So all these are the umbrella of uh, artificial intelligence. Can you move to the next slide, please, Harim? So this uh, actually, uh, diagram shows you uh, the relationships between different uh, terminologies. So we have the upper umbrella that ha contains everything is the artificial intelligence. And then we have the predictive models. Within the predictive models, we have a subset of uh, machine learning. So machine learning is a subset of predictive models. And then we have the latest uh, uh, innovation in artificial intelligence is the deep learning. And actually deep learning is very recent. We have also from the deep learning, it enables uh, a new directions of innovations like the self-driving uh, cars, uh, voice recognition, uh, text recognition, uh, face recognition, uh, and uh, among many others. And then we have, uh, which enables us as well for the dynamic learning. Dynamic learning is one of the important factors of the artificial intelligence. And the dynamic learning means um, the machine learns from its environment continuously. So its knowledge is not limited which is actually uh, similar to the human. So we as a human, when we are baby, we don't know anything, but we start learning. So this is dynamic learning. So we learn and then by, by time, we become like, you know, uh, electrical engineer, computer scientist, uh, uh, medical doctors, lawyers, and so on. So this is the um, uh, great thing about artificial intelligence. It's what we call it continuous learning from its, uh, uh, from its environment. Next uh, slide, please. So these are some, like, you know, history about the uh, evolutions of uh, um, advanced, advancement of artificial intelligence. So let's say uh, artificial intelligence is, like, you know, uh, started early, uh, uh, of the century of 2020, uh, the 20th century, but actually the uh, big jump or the advances uh, started to take uh, fast pace uh, in 1985. So from 1985, the, uh, the attention to artificial intelligence becomes more. And the reason behind that is because of the um, performance of the computers. Because, you know, before 1985, the computers were very slow and they cannot uh, uh, handle the computer parts needed by the artificial intelligence. Because, you know, with the computer, with the artificial intelligence, it needs a lot of training because mainly artificial intelligence is based on trainings, and trainings means um, needs a lot of competition, computational power. So before uh, 1985, it was not feasible to develop, uh, to work on artificial intelligence, or mainly the industry is not, the industry weren't willing to 
put some funding for any artificial intelligence before 1985 because there is no machine that can uh, process the models and the algorithms of the artificial intelligence. But after that, the performance of the computation, computation power uh, becomes much, and now we are in, in the time of the artificial intelligence because of the advances in the uh, uh, computers. So this is very important for you to understand that uh, because of the advances in computational power, and when we talk about computational power, we, call, we talk about the, the speed of processors, CPUs, and the, uh, uh, the size of integrations, the amount of data that could be uh, stored in a small uh, in the integrated circuit. So these are very strongly related. And, and that's why you see the advances in the artificial intelligence uh, in the recent years. And imagine I'm going to give you just example of ChatGPT. Uh, ChatGPT is the mainly based on deep learning. And I'm sure that all of you have, know, uh, know about ChatGPT. It's very popular and very helpful. And uh, but you couldn't imagine how many parameters in this chat GPT. In the, in the chat GPT, it's about 170 billion parameters. So imagine these parameters that learned from all the information in the internet. Without the uh, supercomputers, for example, chat GPT wouldn't be existed. Although the theory existed, the methods existed, but without the power uh, computational power, uh, it cannot be achieved. And uh, uh, the advances as well in computers will be uh, continuously, will continue to uh, to perform much better in every uh, year. Next, please. Next slide. Go to the next slide, please. Yeah, so, <clears throat> so let's say focus on only deep learning. So deep learning actually is the is a key to the advances that we are uh, seeing now. Deep learning is mainly based on neural networks. Uh, neural networks, the concept of it is very old, but uh, the idea of deep learning becomes very uh, uh, popular and uh, in artificial intelligence applications uh, because the number of the uh, hidden layers uh, needed for deep learning is, is huge. Uh, so that's why if you could see in the uh, uh, diagram shown, we are just showing you some of the hidden layers. So this one is a deep learning network with uh, three uh, hidden layers. But actual uh, hidden layers for the chat GPT and uh, we're talking about a uh, huge uh, number of uh, hidden layers. And when we're talking about the larger the number of the hidden layers, the better performance can be achieved by the uh, deep learning model because it will, uh, it will enable the system to solve more complex uh, uh, problems. Let's say, always I look at it uh, uh, in, in terms of dimensions. You know, and I'm sure you are all uh, engineering and IT uh, students. Uh, you know, there are some uh, problems that is one dimensional, another problems are two dimensional, another problem that are three dimensional problem. Uh, four dimensional for us like you know with the mathematical skills that we that we have learned uh, during our studies a uh, human cannot uh, handle more than maybe three dimensional complex problems so the mathematical derivations for problems that uh, needed for more than <clears throat> three dimensional complexity four maybe five maybe ten maybe hundreds 
So with the artificial intelligence, with the deep learning model, the system can, uh, is, able, I mean, is capable of solving n-dimensional complex problems. And that's why uh, deep learning becomes much uh, very popular. Although, yani, deep in mind, I want you to understand that still we are using the statistical method, the uh, mathematical models that we have uh, uh, been yani, developed over the hundreds of years. But what is the factor that's been added for the deep learning mainly is the training. So the training wasn't uh, there when we, uh, yani previously when we want to uh, solve a certain problem, we derive, you know, remember, in mathematical derivations. Uh, but uh, the mathematical derivations um, substitu being substitu substituted by training. So the, it's, the, it's the key that makes the artificial intelligence uh, capable of solving very complex problem, multi-dimensional problem, is because of the training. So the training adjust the model. So the model will be uh, initially started with a certain uh, parameters. And we talk when we talk about models, we talk about the parameters, so the, which is numbers at the end of the day. So at the beginning, we get some numbers for to solve a certain complex uh, problem. But with the training, these numbers are going to be changed until we achieve the right uh, model mathematically, right, to solve the problem. The next slide, please. Rima, do you want me to share my slide maybe better, if you like? And then it's happening. So, yes. Oh, okay. Okay, okay so. Yes. Yeah, so the, uh, now we'll uh, talk about uh, some uh, my, um, uh, of my research uh, projects at University of Dubai. Definitely when I say University of Dubai projects means not only the University of Dubai, but we do projects in collaboration with international universities. So I, ha I have uh, many international uh, collaborators, some of them from India. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it's great, yeah. Some others from, uh, for example, uh, Canada, America, Europe, or Australia. So these are samples of the project, but they are not the all projects. Uh, like, you know, we have vehicle-to-vehicle uh, -vehicle wireless charging. This is, a, again, a very interesting topic because, you know, the future is going to be uh, wireless charging. And when we talk about wireless charging, you know, here we're talking about uh, high power wireless uh, com communication. So, for example, uh, the wireless communication for low power, which is in uh, nano uh, watts, is already there, and that's how the communication are achieved in the last hundred years or so. But here we're talking about high power. We're talking about kilowatts, maybe, uh, hopefully in the future megawatts, <laughs> transferring, uh, transmitting high power using uh, wireless technology. So at the University of Dubai, we uh, started uh, to, uh, to work on that. We're starting with the magnetic uh, transmission, but hopefully we'll work in the, uh, on microwave transmission of high power. So this is, again, one of the points. And definitely, when we talk about this project, we'll include uh, artificial intelligence in it. Because to uh, make the parameters of the antennas, propagation, for example, uh, to be uh, optimized using uh, artificial intelligence uh, uh, techniques. We have indoor uh, localization project. This is a very interesting project. Local <clears throat> indoor localization means that, you know, GPS is not working accurately inside the buildings indoor. So that's why we are working on uh, uh, on this project to enable uh, the localization of the, of the 
machine or the robots or, or the drones inside the building. And the application is huge, especially for emergency. So for emergency, for example, we can send robots in the disaster area and this uh, inside the building and could be localized and to see its uh, location and then uh, they can uh, maneuver. Also, there is uh, some project in the, uh, and again, with indoor localization, we use a lot of uh, artificial intelligence. So we are developing artificial model to, again, to optimize the parameters of the indoor, indoor localization uh, system. We have some project on uh, uh, STEM learning. So this is uh, very important for e-learning or online learning. Um, a lot of projects uh, with the, in the field of healthcare, uh, thanks to Professor Alavi, he has done a great job in this uh, di direction. Uh, I will show you some of these projects later in, in the presentation. There is the face recognition as well. Uh, as you know, face recognition now has been advanced uh, a lot. And some of the airports, uh, uh, they have implemented such systems. I'm not sure in India, but uh, here in UAE, they have implemented it in the airports. So even uh, while the crowd moving, there is a system can recognize their faces. Uh, still at the beginning, but uh, it's uh, it's coming. Very soon, the, there will be a very automated assisted, uh, system to check into the airport and check out without any um, uh, manual intervention or human intervention. Uh, and this uh, idea is, yani, is a great idea so that you don't need to worry about anything. You just go straight to the plane. <laughs> and when you go out, straight to the plane and the system, uh, artificial intelligence system will recognize the crowds, people, are they eligible to enter the country, they have right visa or something like that. It's a very interesting, and uh, but still there will be a lot of work to be done in this direction. There's another interesting project we have done is the energy efficiency. And this is very important because uh, uh, of climate change. You know, we have uh, a lot of uh, challenges in the climate change. So so what we did actually, this project actually, uh, I'll talk about it later in more details. And next slide, please. <clears throat> I'm going to give you some information about the research lab, one of the research lab. I think uh, the chancellor has uh, visited Rimi. Remember, yeah. The, yeah, it's called the Mohammed Barash Space Center, uh, where uh, Mohammed Barash Space Center is the space agency in Dubai uh, responsible for any space missions. And where they have done many of them. So they have Mohammed Barash Space Center lab at our college, and we have uh, um, around 12 full-time researchers. They work on various projects serving, serving Mohammed Barash Space Center mainly remote sensing. Yes. Okay, next slide. Uh, one of the projects with the Mohammed Barash Center is the uh, automatic palm trees uh, detection. Uh, Dr. Alawi as well worked on this project. The idea is to uh, uh, detect the palm. Here, not satellite images, but uh, aerial images, because with the satellite images, we cannot get the right resolution. So with this project, the system can identify the trees, and then uh, uh, it can count the number of trees, because you know UAE is one of the bigger uh, pro uh, producer of dates, and there are, uh, I think, more than 30, 40 million uh, date palms. <laughs> Yes. So this system is actually, uh, we've got a very high efficiency and accuracy using uh, deep learning models. Uh, next one. This one about automatic uh, ship detection. This one based on the satellite images. So with this system, using the deep learning as well, 
uh, we uh, the researchers at Muhammad Rashid Centers uh, with under our uh, supervision, the faculty supervision, um, to analyze the satellite images and then identify uh, any ship detection. This one will serve um, and um, you know has got a lot of uh, applications. One of the main uh, uh, application with the custom department to identify intruders. You know, maybe there are ships that are not registered. Uh, so this has got. Yeah, and this is one of the application, but has more. Next slide. Uh, you know, this one is more uh, in depth. Uh, about the deep learning and you know in deep learning uh, it has got as i said has got many uh, layers many layer many stages and many within each stage there are many deep learning model for that so usually the main idea of deep learning is to identify some high level uh, low level features at the beginning of the uh, system and then feed it to the higher level features of the system and then it will enable at the end of the day the system to identify whether it is a phase uh, uh, recognition or ship detection or plane detection or any object detections. This is not up only applied to the uh, images but also applied to the video, also applied to the voice uh, recognition as well. And we got a very nice uh, high resolution, 95%. Next. Uh, again, this is, uh, you know, another uh, similar project with the Mohammed Raj Space Center. We have done also the researchers. They have the, done it. And, and, you know, all of these work, uh, a lot of uh, uh, Q1 journal, Q2 journals publication being done. So, um, uh, so for example, for my publications, um, all the journals are open access, open source, open access. So any of you can access them. Um, uh, they are available actually. Uh, so if you go to the Google Scholar of and just uh, Google my name, all my publications in journals I'm talking uh, are open access. Uh, and mainly the publications are Q1, Q2, because we are always here at University of Dubai, we are targeting Q1 and Q2 journals. When we do Scopus, definitely, and we're talking the Q1, Q2 journals means that the top journals in the world uh, from the high quality. So again, any of you, when they look at uh, the, uh, our publications, if they are interested to have more information, they can uh, please feel free to contact me or contact uh, Professor Alavi in this regard. Yeah. So this is again for airplane detection, which is similar to the ship detection. Next. This one, again, another uh, uh, nice uh, project for Mohammed Baraj Space Center, which is the water bodies detection. So it means that we need to identify uh, uh, any water. I think in, in, for India, it will be very useful because <laughs> you have a lot of uh, uh, monsoon yes. floods, is that right? So, Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, so this I'm sure it will help. Uh, it's not much in UAE, we don't have rain actually. <laughs> but again, uh, you know what is uh, the challenges uh, or the concern we have now uh, at UAE is the, uh, the rise of water level, sea level, I mean. So this is a major problem, uh, yeah, any challenge, not imminent, but uh, in the future. So, the, but uh, UAE now they are uh, putting the plans to yeah, to avoid these uh, problems of the future problems because if they see rise level of a uh, few meters I think depends on the area most of Dubai will be disappeared uh, definitely this uh, a problem not just in UAE even in India uh, in any coastal areas. So remember, with the climate change, we have global warming, and this global warming will melt the uh, ice in the North Pole, South Pole, which uh, causes the continuous rise of uh, sea level. 
So it's like actually a serious problem. Uh, but it could be avoided, you know? Um, I'm sure uh, if they uh, built some infrastructure at the cost, uh, they could avoid it. But we're talking about not next year, five years, maybe after 50 years, uh, 70 years, but it's better to be prepared from now. And that's why we have uh, done this project. Again, with this uh, convolutional uh, encoder, decoder uh, architecture. <clears throat> Next slide. We have the uh, feature extraction as well. Feature extraction is mainly uh, for, uh, for this project to identify um, not just water, but how we have many classes. So we have, we could identify the water, uh, bodies, vegetation in the images, in the satellite images. Uh, we could identify buildings, roads, lands. And this has huge, huge applications for various industry and government uh, departments. Again, we have done this project and we have achieved uh, good accuracy. And remember, always there is always improvement in the research directions. Next slide. Uh, we have super res uh, resolution uh, project. Uh, again, so, uh, super resolution project is uh, when we want to uh, create, uh, uh, convert image with low resolution into high resolution. And this is very important because with the satellite images, we have very low resolution. Sometimes we have satellites that identify um, each pixel as, uh, for example, uh, uh, few meters, uh, which is not uh, useful for certain application. So with the super resolution, we can enhance the resolution of the images to be for a better resolution. And then we could apply the uh, deep learning model to identify uh, certain features. So here we are showing the um, uh, the palms in you in Dubai. I'm sure you have heard of it. Uh, yes. Yeah. So this one uh, we apply it and we get higher resolution about uh, the palm, and then uh, it will serve the various uh, government departments to to look and dig for certain information in these uh, images. Next. Uh, colorization is as well as a very useful uh, for the images. So images, so this system again based on the deep learning, we can convert uh, the uh, gray images, black and white, to uh, color. And you know this is, has been done uh, successfully with the uh, with the movies in the 30s, 40s of last centuries. They were only black and white, and they. Um, um, make it uh, in color as well. But here we are talking about automation of the process rather than do it manually. <laughs> so this is a very, again, another uh, useful project. Next project, next slide. Yeah, this one is a very interesting project. It's about uh, uh, archaeology, you know. So in Dubai, uh, New AE, I think, there is uh, some archaeology site where there are a lot of uh, metal artifacts uh, hidden in, uh, yani inside the deserts, deep, I mean, deep inside the desert. We talk about maybe 20, 30 meters deep. So again, this one is uh, uh, a very um, good project. Uh, but this one, we, uh, we need uh, actually um, a special uh, radar detection of the metals. So uh, could be uh, special uh, tools that uh, could be scanned next to the earth, to the ground or to the desert, and then to identify whether there are uh, uh, some artifacts. And these artifacts usually metal. So that's why it needs radar technology to, because with the satellite it's very difficult to get it. <clears throat> next. 
this is, as I mentioned to you, uh, another project is called Indoor Localization. Uh, so this uh, project, we uh, were able to develop uh, a system that could uh, localize the uh, whatever, whether it is a drone or a robot, uh, to give the precise location uh, within the building. And this is again uh, with the help of deep learning. Next one. Next slide, please. <clears throat> so this is again about the, uh, the indoor localization, but this uh, uh, we have used various uh, uh, data sets and techniques from various, they are all, all available uh, in the uh, yeah, in the internet. Next, uh, this is the another uh, uh, project, and this project is a huge. We have uh, collaborated actually with uh, Qatar University and Sharjah University. Sharjah University in UAE, but Qatar University in Qatar. Uh, so we have equipped uh, building with the uh, IoT. We we'll talk about IoT means sensors and to collect information about various uh, information from the building. Uh, and the idea is to use deep learning to optimize the uh, energy consumption. So we got a lot of data like uh, humidity, temperature, the size of the, of the rooms, uh, you know, uh, many parameters. We fed it to the deep learning model and we got uh, an optimized uh, usage of uh, energy. So it is, it is it's like you know smart building, but more very intelligent. Not smart building, it's intelligent building from the uh, energy consumption. So the energy is not very simple uh, uh, switch off, switch in, uh, but it is more uh, intelligent than that. And we got very uh, good. Uh, Efficiency. <clears throat> Again, we use the uh, the deep learning model, uh, convolutional uh, neural networks to achieve. Uh, uh, and you know, I'm not sure um, there are what's called transfer learning in in, uh, in artificial intelligence. So we don't uh, develop the deep learning model from scratch. So we use existing uh, models, uh, for example, uh, AlexNet. We use this AlexNet, AlexNet and then put a simple, uh, uh, we develop a simple layer at the top of this uh, AlexNet to achieve the, to, I mean, tell, tell her the uh, AlexNet to this specific application. And this is very uh, popular in artificial intelligence. We call it transfer learning. It means that we, instead of building the deep learning model from scratch, we rely on uh, uh, matured, uh, generic, I mean, generic matured deep learning model, like the AlexNet, other one is GoogleNet, uh, and uh, some others. And then we just uh, put a high, uh, one layer at the top of this model of the, I mean, when we say, layer means deep learning uh, layer model on the top of this uh, generic model and then the performance we get is very high. Next. <clears throat> this one I'm sure uh, uh, a lot of I'm sure undergraduate project and postgraduate project about uh, uh, face recognition and video surveillances. And when we talk about this one, we talk about not the one that when you go in the airport, you have to uh, stand on a certain spot, but this is for the crowds, you know what I mean? So this uh, surveillance, the default surveillance, it will be uh, automatically identify uh, people uh, in the crowd uh, while they are moving uh, for uh, various, uh, uh, purposes. <clears throat> One purpose which is very now uh, important is the check-in, check-out in the uh, airport. Next, please. 
this is more in details about the architecture of uh, uh, video surveillance and face recognition using deep learning model. Next, please. Uh, this is another problem. Uh, another project. This is just a proposal. We have just proposed it to the um, to the funding agencies here in Dubai. It's about uh, establishing uh, e-talent system. So this system, we develop a platform, intelligent platform based on the AI, <clears throat> artificial intelligence, to discover and mentor the talents. And I think this is uh, very important in India because uh, you have mil uh, millions of talents in India. So I think uh, such a system will benefit uh, any countries, uh, but especially India because uh, they, we got large amount of talents, but the problem how to uh, discover them and how to mentor them. So this uh, platform, is to develop a platform that could be used by public uh, to say, okay, I I am I have this kind of talents, and the system will using the deep learning artificial intelligence to automatically uh, assess these talents and uh, uh, communicate with uh, with them to take them further to give them more attention by the government, by the industry, to adopt them. So this system is very useful. Awesome. Okay, next. So this is the architecture of the, uh, <clears throat> another uh, project we call the Smart Education. Uh, so this is again regarding the uh, online learning. Okay, next. Uh, for health uh, care, yeah, as you see, like, you know, uh, I have a lot of uh, teams working in different applications. But remember, the AI is AI. <laughs> so the AI model, the skills needed, is uh, the same, regardless of the various applications. But we gain more experience when we apply the AI models or develop AI models in various applications. That will enhance our uh, research group, research uh, skills, and uh, give the, so that we can get a more uh, a useful result from uh, from one application and apply it to another application. So one of the projects as well we are proposing to the Dubai Health Authority is uh, supporting autistic children. In the UAE, we have. Uh, uh, a lot of autistic children. So that uh, will help these autistic children. Usually this system is very complex, but we are talking now about only uh, mentoring them, you know, diagnosis. Diagnosis is very difficult of the autistic children. Uh, and then treatment. Uh, so it has got a lot of faces but we are uh, starting uh, uh, working with Dubai Health Authority to see whether what is their priority now, whether it is diagnosis or treatment. Okay, so this is the project. Okay, again. This is generic, general model of the uh, system that uh, support autistic. And as you see, there are a lot of stakeholders the therapists, uh, caregivers, uh, the children, parents. Uh, so these will will be using the same platform. So this platform will be developed uh, mainly mobile applications as well. So it has got uh, platform and mobile applications. So the uh, various stakeholders, children, parents, therapists, therapists can use their mobile application to access the system. In addition to the uh, normal. Next, please. Yeah, this one is uh, another project with uh, my group, with, uh, Professor Aladi, <laughs> skin uh, 
cancer prediction. Uh, as, and as you see that, we are always same similar models. Yeah. But not exactly similar because the training will be different. As I remember my, uh, what I'm saying is that the main idea is to change the parameters in the uh, deep learning model to achieve a certain task. So that's why, uh, and you know with deep learning, there are a lot of uh, methods. Learning, uh, for example, learning methods different. Uh, so there are a lot of parameters to be changed for various applications. So it's not like, you know, uh, you do something on a certain application, you just take it, apply it to another application. It's not going to work like that. <laughs> okay, next. This is more details about the uh, deep learning or skin cancer prediction that could uh, predict uh, various types of skin cancer. Again, this is uh, the uh, result of, the, of this uh, project. Next. Again, another project is a COVID. I, I'm sure that everybody were, work, were working on COVID during the pandemic. So again, we have, uh, uh, with the research group, we work on uh, analyzing uh, x-rays for lungs lungs x-rays to identify whether this is a pneumonia, uh, COVID, or normal uh, healthy uh, lung. Next, this is the result we got, very high accuracy. Next. Okay, now uh, we are like, you know, uh, at the end of my talk is about uh, the significant challenges in AI research. You know, AI is a huge area and a new area, and it's got a lot of challenges. So one of the main challenges is called improving generalization. Generalization means that I, I develop AI model that could be used in as much applications as possible. So this is the idea of generalization. Uh, at the, currently, there are some generic models, as I mentioned, Google Net, AlexNet, but these are, uh, uh, but still we need to add a certain layer, transfer learning, we say, we mentioned that, to be a specific for a certain, uh, but remember, we are as a human, we are general uh, AI. <laughs> Our brain is general because uh, I am a professor, I can work in various areas. So this is kind of general uh, generalization. So again, this is a new gen uh, a challenge for the AI. So there are a lot of uh, work toward the AI uh, uh, generalization. Again, <clears throat> explainable uh, AI. Explainable AI becomes very popular uh, with the um, uh, autonomous car. <laughs> with the invention of autonomous car, you know. Uh, okay, now, soon, like, you know, maybe in 10 years or so, we'll have uh, autonomous car uh, driving more the normal cars. Now, what happens if there is an accident? And remember, I'm sure you heard about Google, uh, car uh, hit some lady. I mean, it's that accident happens. The idea is that who's going to be responsible with the with the current AI model that we are developing. It's like black box or kind of black box. So explainable AI, they want to make the uh, black box to be more transparent, so that when the investigators come and look at the model of the used for the autonomous car, they can understand the model because it's explainable AI, not a normal AI, it's not a black box AI. And then based on that, whether they could judge whether the, where is the problem. So once the problem identified, uh, the 
the people like the police or the lawmakers or the law uh, uh, judges can decide who is responsible for that accident. So, so explainable AI is, uh, is a very challenging uh, uh, area of uh, applications. Actually, I, <clears throat> I'm going to co-supervise PhD student at Macquarie University. Uh, she's working in explainable AI. So this is something, again, will be added to our uh, activities at the University of Dubai. And I, I really uh, I think explainable AI is something that you could consider uh, because it's very important. Definitely, it has got a lot of techniques, so you are not going to work uh, from the beginning. There are a lot of methods to apply to make the AI model more explainable, rather than just a black box. That, this is, again, uh, we need to be careful when we develop the autonomous system, because autonomous system we talk about, uh, still now there is some kind of uh, human intervention, in the autonomous system, but the challenge is to how to make the system fully autonomous without the human intervention. And what are the ethics behind it, uh, consequences? <laughs> and that's why explainable AI is very important in this direction. Next, please. Uh, also, like, you know, data product, this is a, a traditional uh, challenges of the data privacy, AI safety and security. And um, I talked about AI safety because uh, of the explainable AI. So explainable AI is again uh, strongly related with the AI safety. Um, should be bias and fairness. This is for a human, I think. For AI, we need to make it again uh, to be biased, non-biased, I mean, and fair <laughs> with the, when making decisions, you know. Uh, and then competition and resources constraint is improving, so this is a very mild challenge. Uh, because, you know, quantum computing is coming, is that right, really? Quantum computing is coming. So with that, we will have uh, maybe millions or hundred millions more powerful computing computers with the quantum computing. And it's coming, you know, computer, uh, quantum computing, it will not be for very far, okay? And these are some directions uh, of the research, uh, big data, and various applications. I think we have talked a lot about this. So the future of AI is everywhere. AI is everywhere. <laughs> it's used everywhere in every application. Next. Okay, now uh, we have, uh, I have concluded my talk and I'm ready to address uh, questions.